Meanwhile, with more than 60 million Americans now out of work amid the coronavirus outbreak, President Trump is trying to make what he says is the biggest decision of his life. I want to get it open as soon as we can. We have to get our country open. I'm going to have to make a decision, and I only hope to God that it's the right decision. But I would say, without question, it's the biggest decision I've ever had to make. Joining me right now is Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks. He has hundreds of his own businesses, one of the stars of Shark Tank. Mark, what decision should he, what should be the criteria that the president keeps in mind when he makes the biggest decision of his life? I think he needs more information. I think you can't just use the death rates and the the, the number of people who are, are ill or sick or anything. You've got to go out and start talking to businesses about what they see on the other side. I would do a survey. I would send something out to companies and say, when we open back up fully, do you anticipate, A, hiring the same number of people, B, hiring more, or three, retaining less? And I would send out the same type of survey somehow to employees and say, do you anticipate going back to the job you left or the job that you were fired from, or do you anticipate going to a completely different job, or do you anticipate not going after a job at all and don't want to work? because we need more information to try to give us some indications of what things are going to be like after this reset. What are the responsibility of these business owners? I mean, when I walk into a building, should they be taking my temperature on my forehead? Should I take that Abbott test 15 minutes to see if I do, in fact, have the virus? Get one, even if I go out to lunch, do I take another one of those tests? What should the That's businesses be prepared to do? The, first of all, the businesses should be, be prepared to introduce whatever science the scientist tells us that we need to introduce, whatever Dr. Fauci and company tells us is necessary, that's what we have to be prepared to do. But along those lines where there's uncertainty, we're really going to have to adjust our businesses. You know, restaurants are going to have to realign the tables within, you know, we're going to have to think about at the American mm -hmm. Airlines Center, how we're going to sit people. There's just so many different variables that we have to consider, um, but we're just going to have to be agile. Let's talk about sports for a second. Sports Illustrated said a quote that I, I wanted to share with you and get your thought uh, on when sports is going to start again. Uh, well, is it going to come back soon? The quote, we will not have sporting events with fans until we have a vaccine. That, according to Zach Benny, a Ph.D., and uh, who wrote his dissertation on injuries in the NFL. Do you agree with that? You know, again, I don't want to try to pretend I'm the scientist. I'm the wrong person to ask on exactly what it's going to take. But, you know, w there are scientists that we trust, and whatever they tell us, that's what the NBA is going to do. And I, as an employer, until I have absolute certainty that my employees are going to be healthy going to work, I'm not going to ask them to do so. You know, if I had to guess, I do think we'll play games without fans initially. And then as we feel more confident going back to work and going into crowds, then we'll start to explore whether or not to bring fans into arenas and stadiums. Be very interesting because after 9-11, we definitely changed the way we did it through the turnstiles. We yep. could have the distancing going through the turnstiles. We could have every third seat being sold. There are things that could happen, but I, I imagine a guy like you will be brought in on that thought process because there's the science and there's the practical. I own a sports team, and I know if this is possible. Right, Mark? Yeah, and there's no question. I mean, you're going to have to talk to your customers. You're going to have to build up that confidence. We're going to have to try a lot of different things. You mentioned 9-11. I think, you know, part of the program where we're giving money to airlines, one of the things that the government may consider doing is pre-buying seats and, you know, because the government spends a lot of money on commercial travel. So why not partner with the airlines as part of this deal and have federal employees do some of the testing on flying on airlines? Because if we can build confidence that you could travel in a plane comfortably and without risk, that's going to start to build the confidence that people can go into confined places or where there's a lot of people. But that has to be part of the program, things that we look towards, because, again, it comes down to science and building confidence. So, Mark, the president on Tuesday is going to name this council about bringing America back economically and putting us back to work. Would you like to be on that council or be considered? Yep. Hey, any way I can serve my country, I'm all in. Yes. If they ask me to, I'd be happy to. Yeah, that will be great. Uh, sometimes the president watches tonight. And I don't know. I know he's not allowed to do much because we're all sheltering in place. So maybe he heard that and he'll call you. Uh, uh, lastly, so. the small business. Uh, I hope so too because the one thing I noticed, no matter which show you on, whether it's radio, TV, sports, or news, you always you sh you're putting the country first. I have no idea how you stand politically, and I think that's why people 
look at your track record, look at your resume, look at your success, and they got to call your number. Lastly, the, uh, let's take a look at what's happened so far with the $2.2 trillion and how it affects, uh, uh, affects small business. $340 billion. Do you think it's working? Um, I think the program's a good program. I think the ex execution has um, suffered some. I think the banks are acting too much like banks. They need, they're going to need to be forced to say, you know, just give the loans first and we'll deal with fraud and problems after the fact because it's costing us more in lost jobs and companies going out of business by holding things up and slowing down the loans than it would cost us in fraud. So hopefully things will speed up and hopefully we'll look back and just say it was a slow week to start things off. Um, but right now it's a challenge for small businesses and a lot of my companies are really concerned. Right, and they, they can't tell you to retain labor and then tell you find your money so elsewhere to pay your rent, right. uh, take care of your lease, and keep your lights on and maintenance of your equipment. The 75 well, and I'll tell you, there's even some other work. issues, right? It's, it's, it's not even just about that. Particularly for companies that have investors, you know, there are certain things called affiliate rules, which the banks are saying, well, you know what, if you have this investor or you have a company that you, you're connected with, unless you're a restaurant franchisee, you may not be able to get these loans. And there's so much conflicting information on that affiliates program that companies that have taken in investors and more than, you know, 50 percent of companies have taken in investment at some right. level are really freaking out, freaking out. Right. Uh, so let's drill down, talk to people and then get the answers. Uh, Mark yep. Cuban, thanks so much. Hope you get that call by Tuesday. Me too. Thanks, Brian. Take care.